Hello, everyone, and welcome once more to an EP podcast from the Cleveland Clinic. I'm Osama Wazni. I'm the section head of uh, clinical electrophysiology here at the Cleveland Clinic. And with me today, it's my honor to introduce you to Dr. Santangeli. He's our new director of the VT Center. So welcome, uh, Dr. Santangeli, and uh, thank you for being here with us. Thank you, Dr. Wazni. It's a pleasure to be here and part of this group. So could you tell us, uh, uh, Dr. Santangeli, what is it about our VT Center that makes us special? Well, I mean, we are really specialized in the most complex uh, VT ablation in particular and treatment of VT, but it's not just uh, the ablation part. We really specialize in treating care of patients from the beginning to the end of, the, of their uh, management pathway. So we have a strong relationship with uh, cardiac genetics, with imaging, with uh, uh, CT surgery. And that makes the entire program extremely suitable for any patient, really, from the most complex, to also the least complex ones, where we can take care of the full uh, spectrum of uh, diseases associated with VT. That's very good. And can you tell us more about our collaboration with our heart failure colleagues in, with, with VT, in VT patients? Yes, one unique aspect about this program is that we do meet really as a, as a team within the HVTI center to discuss uh, what the pathway would be for every, each individual patient. We have a strong collaboration again with imaging, which is very important for pre-procedural planning. With the heart failure team in particular, as I mentioned, because we do know that some of these patients may have associated heart failure comorbidities. So we want to know really which way they're going in terms of their prognosis and what the best treatments are even after the ablation. So we take care of the ablation aspect, but it's really more about the entire patient. So could you just go with me, like, for example, the process when a patient uh, with ventricular tachycardia or VT storm gets transferred to the Cleveland Clinic, what is it that we uh, do for those patients? How do we take them from VT storm, for example, to ablation, if that is the end point, or through the medical therapy? Yes, there are different aspects to that. Of course, the um, getting rid of the VT storm is, of course, the primary end point for us. But before we get to that point, we really want to understand what the patient is in terms of the heart failure and other comorbidities. So we do discuss college, collegially within our uh, section and also um, with other sections, heart failure and general cardiology, as well as imaging, uh, what the treatment plan would be. And if we do involve CT surgery when necessary, specifically when a hemodynamic support is necessary. Uh, we have a plan of what may happen in case the patient decompensate during the procedure. We already know and so to provide optimal outcomes for those patients. And uh, during the procedure, of course, we, uh, we, do, uh, el we try to eliminate all the inducible VTs together with the VT storm to maximize the outcome. But that can be done only if you have a strong collaboration with other sections. Yeah, no, we are really very lucky to have a comprehensive team uh, in HVTI, in cardiology, and especially in electrophysiology with uh, surgeons, with the heart failure specialists, so that we can you know, manage these patients comprehensively, whether it just needed uh, a VT ablation or medical therapy, or even destination therapy with LVADs or even transplant in, in some cases. So really in, in that respect, uh, I think we're one of the most advanced centers um, in the world for this. Now, certain uh, conditions are genetic or inherited. Uh, so could we get, just go over some of these uh, etiologies and how we manage them? Yeah, thank you for asking this question. This is really one of my major focus for my also research, clinical research. Uh, we do have a, a, a strong center for inherited cardiomyopathies and, uh, and VT in particular. I'm talking about arrhythmogenic cardiomyopathies, left and right type of arrhythmogenic cardiomyopathy, Brugada and Long QT syndrome. And uh, we do have a strong collaboration with cardiogenetics. Uh, in fact, most of our non-ischemic patients with non-ischemic cardiomyopathy at some point will undergo some form of genetic testing, which is so important, not so much for the proband, uh, but more for the family management, which we also coordinate within the HVTI. So it's been really something of uh, uh, unique, I would say, to this group, uh, the collaboration that we have, so we can maximize and improve the outcomes for uh, patients and their families. That's excellent. And uh, finally, uh, can you tell us about some new approaches in mapping and ablating PVCs and VT in general? Yes, so uh, we have two different types of struggles that we have for VT ablation uh, and for mapping as well. The most important one is whenever we cannot map because of an inaccessible substrate, mm -hmm. in particular when it's intramural, so uh, inside the septum and inside the free wall of the ventricles where we cannot access those. In those cases, we uh, came up with some ways of mapping by using uh, perforators of the veins, of the, of the coronary sinus, 
Uh, and occasionally also because of transarterial to deploy microcatheters in those areas. And if we do record um, uh, activity of interest, then we have new ways of ablating them by injecting, for example, alcohol. But we also do uh, treat these cases with uh, bipolar ablation occasionally, uh, which is something that we also do here, uh, and other types of bailout strategies that we have available. So we really, that's one of the areas where we are uh, working actively to improve the outcomes. And, uh, and the other aspect would be the new approaches uh, for uh, one of the aspects that we're still really working on to improve the efficacy and safety of epicardial mapping. Uh, we came up with a, um, uh, with a new way, of actually, of accessing the pericardial space that is facilitated by, uh, we call it CO2 injection from the, um, uh, it's actually a technique that has been initially described in England, but brought here in the US by us, actually. And uh, we are the most experienced in the US in doing that, actually. And uh, um, uh, this improves the efficacy and safety of this approach. So we can provide this very effectively and very safe to every patient, really, that needs it. Uh, with minimal risk of complications. That is perfect. Actually, that's one of the most complicated uh, procedures that we do and the one with the most risk. So any way we can do to make it safer and easier is, of course, welcome. Also, our team is uh, very involved in the new uh, technologies and uh, new energy sources for ablation, um, whether in the atrium or in the ventricles. So now we're talking about ventricular foci. But pulse field ablation, we're studying it also in our preclinical work with Dr. Santangeli, and hopefully that will you know, become online in the next uh, few, uh, few years. So thank you very much, uh, Dr. Santangeli, for being uh, with us, for bringing this uh, new approach, comprehensive approach uh, to management of ventricular tachycardia and PVCs. And um, uh, follow us on some more new podcasts uh, from EP in, at the Cleveland Clinic. Thank you very much.